Okay, gameplay video. Gameplay video, Our first very game first play one, video. dude. Here we go, dude. All right, so here's the decks, clockwise around the table. So we've got Sheree Shizo's caretaker up in the top uh, right, helmed by Brad. Uh, let's see, mono black one one creatures. They get recurred, so if they die while Sheree's present. They just come right back into play. Yes, yeah, so we've got um, a lot of value ETBs in the deck. Right, death ETBs, uh, a lot of hand disruption, and then yeah, like your typical black. Uh, crowd control type of thing. Sack demands up the yin yang. Yeah, so down from there we've got Tuvasa. So uh, the sunlit. Uh, originally it was kind of set up like your typical pillow fort, you know, highly resilient type enchantress deck, kind of like the Karametra list that was popularized yeah, a couple. Around. Yeah, but we kind of pivoted it to a hybrid between yeah that and then let's take advantage of the fact that Tuvasa is getting bigger. So it's. It's definitely riding the Voltron. Which yeah, so a lot of value enchantments and kind of Vol Voltron body going on with Tuvasa. Yeah, and then you've got me behind Queen Marquisa. Um, I would say it's political in that I'm trying to ride the wave of damage produced by other people's creatures. So I, I don't really have effects in there, like a lot of curses or anything. Like I have a couple, but what I'm really looking to do is find somebody who I can latch on to and ride their effects out through damage. So, honestly, it's a you'll kind of see it's a bit of a counter pick against this Voltron uh, <laughs> list. And then up at the top left is me playing Amina 2. Uh, it is a blink list akin to what we talked about in a previous episode of the podcast. A little less on the budget side, but the idea being that we're focusing on her middle activated ability, yeah. where we can blink stuff in and out of play and get value so out I think, of I think this is the first game the with her, isn't it? Yeah, it was actually, yeah. I think, my first game with her. So this, this is kind of your dial back from, from Brago. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So so Brago was my, my, my big time bay, but Amina 2 takes a nicer route i guess yeah for the rest of us all right let's start all right, our let's, up, dude. let's dig in dude okay so we're doing setup we're just going to speed through this yeah, fast forward through some setup stuff just playing lands developing mana rocks lightning grease for brad okay now lightning on, grease for brad on tiff's turn here okay so she's bringing her commander into play tapping down bringing in tuvasa which I feel a little naked with Tuvasa at first because it's just a 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. Like, the potential, the high-end potential is really high, but oof. Yeah, I mean, she took a gamble putting her out without any protection, which, you know, I guess she's just trying to get, probably ride the card draw as soon as possible. Yeah. So I get Marquisa out. And I want to start taking advantage of, you know, the monarchy, so. And then I'm going to send her at... Brad. Yeah, so Brad so I'm takes really, the hit. Yeah, I'm really trying to manage Brad's life as quick as possible because if there's any hope of beating that deck, it's that he has a low life total. And he can gain life with that deck for sure. Okay, and I put my Burger King crown on. <laughs> and he's the burger. Burger King. So I go ahead and cast my commander. So that's three commander plays in a row. Yeah. Uh, so Charade's going to be late. Right. Yeah. He, he had he's had two land drops. I don't know if he's gonna. I don't know if he missed one, but yeah, he had no no ramp. Yeah, and I just I just run like. Amina 2's up ability and filter the top. And that's probably why he kept the hand. He probably kept for the Necropotens. So he yeah, ends so he, the turn and peels some cards. Yeah, he just pays in two life. And takes two cards at the end of the turn. So I think Brad was trying to play a little bit conservative. He kind of knows like the. The lower his life total is, like the the higher, the easier it is for us to stop what he's going to try to set up. Sure, I think. And then yeah, with Tuvasa running wild. So Tiff gets to work. She casts an enchantment, draws a card, ghostly prison is cast, and then she goes into combat. Swings with Tuvasa at Andy, taking away his crown. She just snatches it out of my hands. <laughs> Now, Tiffany is the Burger Queen with that extra card. So, yeah, I'm always usually okay with this. The Ghostly Prison is going to stop me, but I want to end the turn with Monarch and have it on somebody else during my upkeep, so I get that. So this is kind of the turning point for me. I was really waiting for this to come out. So she never didn't get any Hexproof, so I put the Vow of Malice on Tuvasa. So now she is plus two, plus two, and as in Intimidate and she can't attack me. But you did have two mana left, so you send Queen Marquisa at Amina Tower, Amina roll Tower, it down. And then you use your assassin to get your monarch back after tapping down your 
artifact on the land. Yeah, I don't know if I had any plans for any anything else, but my thought was is that she's not going to get the monarchy. And Brad yeah. didn't have a creature, and then this is your first creature out now. So this is a pivotal card. I play Knight Incarnate, so when it leaves the battlefield, all creatures get minus three, minus three until end of turn. Yeah, this is a pretty big check. We need it to die to take down Tuvasa, but more than anything, it's going to slow Brad down if it ever dies. So yeah, so I... Gonna lose his board I state. had I had the intention of holding it up as a threat and not really having to put it to use. I just wanted to kind of check Brad with it. But he goes ahead and just plays in with his marsh flitter and getting a couple goblin runes. Yeah, I think he kind of sees the writing on the wall with Tuvasa, so he wants to block. But, but he, he can't because it's intimidating. Right, and he comes at me, or at Amina too, with marsh flitter. At this point, it's seeming like people are not interested in me having the ability to do any <laughs> any flicker effects. Right, I yeah. think Brad was really interested in that. He probably wanted to manage that negative three, negative three, but yeah. it might have been better just to have to, like, Tuvasa die somehow. So Tiff casts Shield of the Oversoul, and this is a big deal on this, so now she's indestructible, flying, and she's on the clock, so it's a 7-7 seven, seven with Putting her six, out six. of range from your creature, the negative three isn't going to cut it now. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to bring it down. So here's me just passing the turn. I want to hold up Death Touch blockers and ride my crown for a bit. Yeah, you're like, I'll take the extra card, draw, and go. Right, she can't attack me. I'm not really threatened by the rest. I thought if you attack me with that negative three, negative three, I think I'd just actually block it. Yeah. So it takes care of Brad's board state, but I'm still... I am I I own Tuvasa at this point. <laughs> Pretty much. So I just cast a Mica Synth Wellspring, reveal uh, an island, and put That's it cool. in play. Uh Gotta take that non-green ramp when you can get it. I suppose so. Kind of underwhelming play at this point of the game with Tuvasa getting real big. Brad untaps. So this is an interesting interaction here that Brad tries to push on Tiff. Yeah. So he brings in the Hope of Gyropur and moves the boots or the greaves over to him. And I think I remember the conversation being that Brad wants her to not attack him because I think he's kind of realizing yeah, that... Yeah, he sees the writing that Tuvasa's right. latched on. Yeah. And that he won't attack her and sacrifice the Hope of Gyropur, denying her the ability to cast non-creature spells during her turn. So the Which, idea being that Tuvasa can't increase in size. Yeah. So he attacks her and then asks if that deal is okay. And I think she ends up agreeing. Yeah, she she acquiesces, and he doesn't sacrifice the hope of Jarrah yeah. It's about as political as Sheree has ever been, in my Honestly, experience. Honestly, and he kind of needed to in this situation. So Tiff plays in with the lands. Oh, what's she getting ready to do, dude? What's she getting ready to do? Sigarda. So now we have an indestructible Voltron commander that now can't be sacrificed. Yeah. So she probably didn't need to take Brad's deal, but she honors it anyway. Maybe she just drew into Sagarda, but maybe, now would be the time to play it. Maybe. And now Brad is even, he's in a worse position. Yeah, he has if no he gets way any of leveraging kind of, her. Right. So Tavas is indestructible now. So any type of black removal that doesn't plummet her below a 6-6, six, six, like a toxic deluge or anything like that he's probably betting on grave pact like effects yeah, so, so he, i end step in insidious dreams and what i want to go grab is something that will reflect the damage off of yeah off of me so yeah so tiff just sank seven into me so she's got seven into me and brad with her commander and you're tutoring up two cards right i think you discarded two here to so your insidious dreams yeah so i end up grabbing two cards that reflect damage back to her face in the event that, you know, it ends up dropping the Vow of Malice. You play Curse of Opulence. Right, and I think I'm trying to figure out at this point who to put it on. I was I was landing. just praying that it wasn't going to be me, because I was like, oh, I don't want to get these attacks. Yeah, that so I need incentive. the gold here, so I ended up attacking anyway, because I, for what I've got in my hand, I need one more mana to be able to resolve both of them. I'm playing as cautious as I can, because I'm really kind of betting that Tuvasa take me home. <laughs> So you come at me or Amina too, whichever one. I think I end up attacking Amina too, and I think you really want to block because you you're sick of the loyalty coming. Yeah, like down. I wanted to be able to flicker with Amina too. I haven't been able to abuse that really at all yet. Yeah. 
And so I go ahead and block with the knight incarnate, giving minus three, minus three to all creatures. Yeah, so this is looking even worse for Brad. So now there's a sack free opponent right across from him. He's lost all of his blockers. Yeah, he has nothing. Yeah. Andy has nothing. I was kind of thinking like, oh, man, Andy might be in kind of a difficult position, but... It's all in my hand, man. It's Yeah, all the stuff's going on in your hand. Right, and here's me pulling up Pokemon Go. <laughs> it was a ghost festival, man. Dude, gotta, gotta get it in. Well, I'm here, I play the Mirror Battle Sphere, get my four Mirror Tokens, and this is why I blocked, because I wanted to blink oh, the mirror battle sphere yeah, on it. this turn yeah. and get an additional four mirror tokens to go along with it. And not lose a Minotaur in the process. Yeah, because I was interested in trying to keep her on the battlefield with doing that. So it's still not gonna help save you from my Tuvasa. Yeah, to your Tuvasa. <laughs> well actually I think it would, right? I mean oh it's flying. That's yeah Tuvasa's flying nah, I forgot. at this point. It's flying and intimidate. So Brad cast Hell's Caretaker and he was kind of talking about how this was underwhelming because it needs to take place during his upkeep so yeah. so he's trickling through necropotence honestly like in hindsight i feel like he should have just been drawing harder on necropotence yeah he should have revved that pretty hard because it's looking so bad for him the result would be been the same so this is a bomb right here ancestral mask she's already got so yeah necropotence the ghostly prison the two enchantments that are pumping it pumping yeah the, the curse of opulence oh yeah the curse of opulence and then yeah two adds up to a 17, eight, 17 so plus 17 so she's an 18 18 at this oh point. my god and she attacks brad and he's he's aced he's gone so yeah i think she gets 21 on him and now he's out yeah because he had seven previously so that's already 25 commander damage she's really seizing the initiative and you'll notice that she's holding up mana so i'm wondering what she's holding that shit up for so you just straight up pass the turn yeah i just let it go <laughs> without with the, i have no reason to advance anything further so i go ahead and filter with amina too and then i go into combat and i just i'm like i'm gonna use the battle ball dude right so rather than attack me i guess you just know well, who knowing your threat that, is knowing that your deck knowing that you could reflect damage back and you had mana up i was not willing to go at you okay yeah and so i thought well i better go at tiffany and get some damage on her because she's She's there. She can kill people. You can't block anyway. I think the writing's on the wall for everybody at this yeah. point. Yeah, so I go at her. She casts Swords to Plowshares on the Battle Sphere. So she takes the eight. And I actually had a misplay here. I, I was going to do a Ghost Away, and I started clearing away my tokens, but then I just let it resolve, hmm. and I left my tokens cleared. I should have had my eight tokens still. But anyway, the writing's on the wall. I'm I'm not in good shape, despite having a life total over 40 at this point. Yeah, it doesn't matter with the commander damage. Yeah, commander damage is coming my way. So I cast Dovin Bond, use the plus one activated ability to make Tuvasa minus three minus zero, hoping Tiff doesn't cast an enchantment. Is it till your next turn, that ability? It's till my next turn. Yeah, yeah. that might be enough. So in this case... Kidding? Yeah, she's got a 13, 16. I'm at seven commander damage. She just needed to cast one enchantment. So I think we kind of misdid the un, the math here. It comes out in the wash. She just goes ahead and attacks me. And... So you probably noticed she hasn't been attacking me with Sigarda. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. And I wasn't about to remind her. So I'm out of the game. She's attacked me. I take the commander damage. And I can't reflect anything using Sigarda because it's hexproof. Not oh, that I right. would waste those reflecting yeah, type. Yeah, for five damage, know. but still. So this is exactly where my deck wants to be. A 1v1 situation. Uh, I've got ways to turn the damage back on my opponent. So this is, this is the ideal situation now for me. So that you, I think you're pointing out that that rolls down the power of Tuvasa with your yeah. Curse of Opulence really coming chain. out. And then in her second main phase, she casts an enchantment. So even though I think we got the math a little bit wrong, it would have turned out. Yeah, so it goes back up. So, um, yeah, sphere of safety and not a really... <laughs> yeah, you don't have any creatures out, not so you're not, you're not attacking at this point. Yeah, maybe she's just trying to get the power up and emptying her hand at this point. Because with, with so uh, I pass. the Ancestral Mask and Tuvasa, each enchantment that she casts is plus three, plus three for Tuvasa. So any enchantment coming out at this point is a big deal. So this is where I got kind of worried. What I didn't want her finding was anything that gave Tuvasa hexproof. <laughs> and she's casting Plea of Guidance, yeah. so she's got a couple target options potentially. So she grabs Song of the Dryads. I think her thought was, I'm just going to get rid of this enchantment. So she goes to put it on Vow of Malice. Right. 
So here I come with Imp's Mischief. Really great black what? card. What? Yeah, I love this card. So it changes the target spell with a single target. You lose life equal to that spell's converted mana cost. So I change the target to her Sphere of Safety. <laughs> because I want the power to still be on Tuvasa. Sure, but that that takes away Tuvasa's addition, but... And then before she goes into combat, I use Delirium. So tap target creature, that player controls. The creature deals uh, to that player an amount of damage equal to that creature's power. The creature neither deals nor receives combat damage this turn. Ouch. I'm throwing it back in her face. So at this point, I th think we had to like count up what was going on here, and we figured it's plus 15, plus 15 at this point. So it's a little weird because you control Vow of Malice at this point, so to, that wouldn't add to Tuvasa's power. Well, if Ancestral I, Mask is global. But but Ancestral, well, Tuvasa's thing, but yeah. Ancestral Mask. It, it gives him plus two, plus two, yeah, just so, innately. Yeah. So she attacks with Sigarda because she's finally noticed, oh shit, I can attack with Sigarda. And Brad reminds her that she's now the Mara. And she becomes Mara. She is the Burger Queen. Okay, I think I just draw go again. She casts another tutor spell. Yeah. So that's two turns in a row that she's digging up for answers just for so I don't Andy. know what she got, but I think at this point she might see what I'm up to. So giving Tuvasa Hexproof like, might not advance her ability to attack, but at least I don't have a way to reflect it. Yeah. Because I have nothing else. That's only what I have. I'm Tuvasa is my permanent at this point. So she casts Aqueous Form. Probably just had it in hand. It adds to the power of Tuvasa. Right, and lets her draw another card. And so she's either digging for answers and then, yeah, pumping her. And I think with the Enlightened Tutor, that goes to the top of the library, correct? And so that puts her in a position she can draw that card. Okay, so we're at 18-18 now. Okay, so here's her answer to Vow of Malice. So she casts R of Silence, which normally would just impede your ability to cast artifacts and enchantments. She uses it, sacks it to destroy your Vow of Malice. Yeah, so I let it go. Because I still have enough to kill her. Yeah, you've got plenty. So we get ready to go to combat. I think she's getting ready to go in, and you're like, hold on. Okay, so okay. here's me trying to get the damage back. So before she goes into combat, I backlash. Same thing, tap an untapped creature. She responds with an arcane denial trying to stop it. Nope. And then I drop a lap of certainty on her. And she's sitting there kind of like dumbfounded this has just happened. Yeah, so this... this card kind of comes in and out of the deck um, but I think with this type of strategy you you really can't have cards like Backlash or Delirium or Deflecting Palm get countered. Like they need to resolve. Yeah when you shoot them is when you need them and they're yeah so Lapse so, of Certainty and then Mana I think it's Mana Tithe is, is my other you show counter off the, spell. You show off the one you'd cast previously that's essentially the same thing. Yeah. I think I'm walking her through what the fuck is going on. And yeah, she's, and she's throwing dead. a fit. <laughs> she's definitely dead. For those of you counting, Andy was playing a deck that did not have blue in it. And he cast two counter spells. One. Well, a well, kind of counter spell. Yeah. A redirect. Yeah, a redirect. Yeah, you're With right. Imp's Mischief. Yeah, so there it is. Uh, yeah. Pretty simple game for our first gameplay video. First gameplay video. Uh, what do you think? In terms of gameplay or just this game, dude? Just this game. So I think uh, I think Tuvasa kind of it does some work, and yours your deck did exactly what it wants to do: ride the damage with one player and get to town. Amina Two is underwhelming to me. Uh, so far, so far, yeah. like it, it's it's definitely limited in comparison to Brago, but it doesn't have the reputation of Brago. So, uh, but yeah, like only have it. I I was limited in my ability to use value out of e ETB effects in that game. Yeah, really disappointed with that charade game too for Brad. I mean, the one thing I did successfully do is I contained charade. Yeah. Charade couldn't go in. Yeah, I think he should have just dove his life total with that necropotence. I don't know what he f would have found, but I think the results would have been the same. Him just, you yeah, know, needed dead. to find answers. But normally that deck, once it f gets its footing underneath people, it 
people just scoop. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, not it's even, rough. It's not even a win by killing people. People just give up. So yeah, well, cool, man. Andy, good game, dude. Good game.